Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got another exciting budget brand battery for you today. This time from Rosenlee. It is their Group 24 size format. 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, lithium iron phosphate battery. If you're looking for a full teardown capacity test and overall quality check for this battery, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. Charging up the Rosen Lee Group 24 for the capacity pull. Just another minute, it'll be completely full, then I'll hook it up and we'll run it down. Just completed charging, so now time to hook it up. All right, so I've got the Rosen Lee connected to the capacity test rig. I always use Alpha Inverter, energy metering shun, all that. We're at 13.92 volts, the inverter's not on yet, so turn on the inverter right there. The inverter's on, so now time to connect the load. And here goes the load right here. All right, the capacity test is underway. 475 watt load. It's a battery charger charging back to my 12 volt system. So there we go right there. I'll let it run and we'll see what this Rosen Lee is made of. So 100 amps continuous discharge current capable on the Rosen Lee. Well, let's just find out. Leave it right here for just a few minutes on the Rosen Lee just to make sure their 100 amp claim stands. I'll burn through, I don't know, 50 or 100 watt hours. Let's say 100 watt hours out of it. All right, that's roughly 100 watt hours out of the Rosen Lee at 130 amp current coming out of the battery. It held it just fine. I don't want to skew the data too much for the capacity. So going back to the regular load that I started with, the little 12 volt charger right there. So, you know, I'll run it like this the rest of the way. So if I lose an amp hour or two of capacity, we all know why. Coming up on roughly the estimated halfway mark on the Rosen Lee battery. So right here, we're still at 12.8 to 12.81 volts. And we're fixed to cross over the estimated, there we go, estimated halfway mark. So is that much more it's got? All right, coming up on the 1280 watt hour mark on the Rosen Lee. So it is doing pretty good. It looks like we're gonna make our nominal 1280 watt hour capacity rated by the manufacturer. I'll film it live as we roll over the 1280 watt hour mark. There we went. We reached the manufacturer specification for this battery. So how much more it's got left in it. Voltage is starting to plummet, so I don't have a lot left. All right, that was the inverter low voltage cutoff. The BMS did not drop out on the battery. That was the inverter. So 1,293 watt hours on an inverter. So the Rosen Lee did pretty good on the capacity test, 1,293. Uh, that's roughly 101 amp hours. And, you know, considering 100 watt hours of the test, I was pulling 120 to 130 amps. So a little capacity, I'm sure, was lost to seat through the BMS and the cells. That was a big load on this battery for a period of the test that you saw. So yeah, I'm I'm thoroughly pleased with the capacity results on this Rosen Lee. So if you decide to pick up a Rosen Lee battery, what do you get? Well, you get a comprehensive user manual. You get a cut sheet or spec sheet on the battery for a quick reference to see all the specifications on the battery, terminal bolts, and a handy folder to keep all your documentation together. And the specification card has all the information about the battery that you could want. One thing I did notice that was inaccurate is the weight right here. That was the actual ship weight on the package right there, not the actual weight of the battery itself. The battery itself weighs right at 24 pounds. So subtract a little bit of weight off of that due to packaging and shipping. And the manual is very good for this battery. It shows you all the safety parameters for the battery, safe operation and use of the battery. You know, everything you could need to know to operate the battery safely for a longer lifespan. Now it's time for the teardown inspection. Now I'm gonna open this battery up we're going to look at it and we're going to see how it's built and you know what kind of BMS and sales and what we can find out about it. So give me just a minute and I will crack this battery open and we'll look at it together, see how good it is. All right, got most of the cover cracked loose on this Rosen Lee. It's epoxied down, so it's got some kind of super duper industrial epoxy on there. So I saved the, the backside over here so we can look at it at the same time together. As I always like to do, get the rest of that plastic off of there. That epoxy, there we go. Let's take a gander at it. All right, uh, let me reposition and uh, go over everything what I'm seeing. 
go over the wiring first on this battery right here, what I'm seeing. A little unique compared to some. Let me check the terminals right there. Everything is tied on the top of the battery. We've got four. That's one, two, three, four, number 12s on the negative, and one, two, three, four, number 12s on the positive to a hydraulic connection on the positive and negative terminal. So I've not seen a manufacturer use four 12s. It's usually a couple of sixes or a single four, things like that. So that's interesting. I'll get you an ampacity comparison or wire conversion to what four 12s are equivalent to on a slide here in just a second. So we have soldered connections onto the BMS on this battery right here. I will pull up some information on this BMS to try to determine the maker, manufacturer of it. So you can see our soldered connections on that side as well. I'll inspect this a little closer in just a minute. Lots of foam around the cell pack right there. And I already see tie band compression, epoxy board between the cells and the BMS right there. So now I will take uh, the cover off, take everything off right here. And I'll see if I can get the cells out of the case. Granted, they're not using the same super industrial uh, epoxy stuff to hold the cells down the bottom of the case. So give me just a second and I'll be right back with you. And one more thing of note before I disassemble any further, you can see they're using a socket cap or socket head uh, screw right here, bolt, instead of a standard, you know, regular hex. So that saves a little bit of room. So that's pretty unique. I've not seen that in any battery before. So that gives us a little more leeway down here underneath the cover for their cell arrangement. So that's interesting. And there was thread locker down in there. So that's nice to see. They had it torqued down pretty good. So with the thread locker, I don't think there's any risk of that coming loose. All right, and here's the cell pack out of the plastic case. You can see we have high density foam everywhere around the cell pack right there. They had a silicone style sealant to hold it secure inside the case. So show you the bottom of it right here. You can see we got corner guard supports. We got tie band compression on there. Cell separator material right there. There's the bus bars. So let me break this down a little further and it does not appear we're gonna have any kind of low temp protection. I don't see any NTC sensors. We just got some balance leads there and that appears to be a high temp thermal switch, not a sensor. So I'll verify that in just a moment. And there's where the high temp thermal switch was glued down. It was underneath this foam right there on the side of the cells. So try to look at this together. Let me pull their sealing off right there and get the data on this switch for you. Let me get you to focus on that. So that is a 65 degree Celsius thermal switch. So it's a set of contacts in there, it's bimetallic. So it gets to 65 degrees C, it opens up and that goes back to the board and tells the board to stop. So it's just a thermal switch for high temp protection. So all the foam off the top, best I can get for the moment. I'll go down one more layer down right here and see if I can find any QR codes on these cells. But you can see we have laser welded cell connectors right there. And then we have soldered balance leads and then they're on a solder strip and then they've laser welded the solder strip onto the, to the cells right there for balancing. So you can see how that's constructed. That's a little bit different. I've not seen that before on one of these batteries. Check the solder connections right there. Seem to be decent. I see full contact, a completed solder joint. So shouldn't have any issues with that. Everything's on there tight. Nothing's wanting to come loose. So that's good to see. We have fully legible QR codes on the cell right there. Zoom you in so you can see. There's the numbers right there. I will try to find some information on them. And here's the other one of the other cells on the battery right there. I ran the QR codes through a couple of decoders on reputable websites and unknown manufacturer of the cells uh, production date from both scans are June of 2024, so they should be new sales. They appear to be new sales. I don't see, you know, anything to indicate otherwise, but having an unknown manufacturer, and it's also got unknown capacity uh, marks on there. So, you know, the data is not in the system for those decoders, but, you know, just so you know, that's what I found. If you find anything about these sales and care to look them up, let me know in the comments if you find out the manufacturer. All right, so I'm going to check this high temp thermal switch right here. 
I've got the battery charging. You see the power supply right here on this switch. If it works properly, it disconnects charging. You'll see this current drop to zero. So let me heat it up and we'll see what we got. All right, it works. Took 45 seconds according to the camera viewfinder to trigger. It's probably got a 15 degrees C dead band. Most of these do about 15 degrees C. Most of them cut back in at 50 C. So there we go. High temp protection works for this BMS. And here's another shot of the BMS numbers right here. I did a little research on this board. It's made by a company called SZ Smart Tech. Uh, they're out of China. And it appears to be just a basic energy storage board. They're a large manufacturer, it appears, according to their website, of basic style BMS boards like this. They also have other offerings too. I believe this is the first time, if memory serves, I've run across this brand in a battery. Uh, not saying that's good or bad. I'm just letting you know that it's a, uh, you know, a new BMS to me. And looking a little further on this BMS, there is another... Uh, high temp switch right there on the actual heat sink plate of the BMS. You can see the little glob of sealant right there. Uh, that's similar to many other brands right there, having that extra high temp protection on the BMS. So you got protection on the cells and the BMS board. You know, this has a robust heat sink, so, you know, should handle the rated 100 amps, you know, with no issue. So I brought the battery up, you know, from the capacity test. I didn't want it sitting in a low state of charge for long to damage the cells. So, 13.2 volts. I just want to see how well the cells are matched or what the voltage are between the cells after that pull down. So let's just see what, you know, how well they're they're sitting. So we're at 3.302 on that one. 3.301 on that one. 3.301 on that, 3.302 on that one, excuse me. And 3.302. 3012 so seems to be a very well matched cell pack um you know after that complete discharge is a partial recharge they're all pretty close together so you know that's that's good to see i like that so i'm gonna share my final thoughts on the rosen lee group 24 at time of filming remember this is a budget battery at time of filming this battery is only 139 dollars so it's a very low price point battery so is this battery worth 139 dollars well all of Rose and Lee's claims in their product literature and their advertisements were met by this battery. Uh, there was no claim of low temp protection. Uh, they claimed 100 amp hours. It delivered 100 amp hours. It's got its high temp protection as claimed in the literature. So that's there. It's got, you know, holds 100 amp load. And, you know, it's a group 24 size format. It appears to be new sales. You know, only thing I don't like, I can't find data on these sales, the manufacturer of these sales, which, you know, that's not here nor there. If they deliver their capacity, they seem to be pretty balanced. So, you know, there's that. You know, new manufacturer for this board I've not worked with. That does not mean that's a bad thing either. Uh, this could be a superb BMS long term. Not really much to knock the battery on because it's, you know, as advertised, as claimed. They're, they're not saying it's anything that's not. So, you know, let me know what you think down in the comment section. You know, is this something you would buy or you're going to buy or be interested in? If you are, I'll put a link in the description so you can find it easy and do some more research on it if you would like. But hopefully I covered everything you need to know today on this battery. If not, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer any other questions you may have. So appreciate y'all watching today. Y'all have a good day. Take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one. And a very special thanks to Rose and Lee for sending in this sample for me to review and test and show you, the viewer, how this battery works and how it's built. Thank you.